Finally, in this video, we will look at implementing the watershed algorithm. And the watershed transform is carried out by using the function watershed. It takes in a single input, which is the distance transform, and it returns a labeled image. Let's switch back over to MATLAB. Now I'm going to assume that you have carried out the steps in the previous video, and you have a distance transform that looks something like this, where each object is a value, and the center point of each object is the lowest point of that valley or basin. Now the watershed function is simply L equals watershed parentheses DD. As I mentioned earlier, you get a label matrix L. Now if we display L, you see an image that looks something like this. So basically each patch um, that corresponds to a single region of space in the watershed algorithm is labeled with a uh, separate number. So this value here, if you look at the index, you'll see that this region here has a value of 1, this region here has a value of 2, region 3, 4, and so on and so forth. Now these regions are interesting, but the most important part for us are the ridge lines, which is the center here, the pixels in black, um, which have a value of 0. These are the ridge lines, and if you remember, the ridge lines indicate where the object should be separated, or where the mass should be cut. So once you have your label matrix, you can use this to update the value of the mass. However, before we do so, I have to introduce a new concept uh, called logical indexing. Now, logical indexing is a special indexing operation in MATLAB in which a logical array is used to index elements in the matrix. Now for logical indexing to work, index must have the same size and number elements as the matrix itself. Let me switch over to MATLAB and show you what I mean. Let's say, for example, we have a vector A that consists of the values 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Now I can declare a logical index that has the same number of elements, in this case 5, that consists of just true and false values. So let's say we go false, true, true, false, false. Notice that the middle two uh, elements are true. And so if we use this logical in, uh, this logical matrix to index elements of A, it will return the elements of A that correspond to the positions where these indices are true. So in this case, it will be the second and third elements, which have a value of 2 and 3 respectively. Now this operation is incredibly useful, and you might find yourself wanting to use this when you are analyzing data. So for example, if you wanted to select elements of A which were greater than the value of 3, you could create an index that has A greater than 3. And then you can now use this index to index elements of A that are greater than 3 in this case, uh, returning values 4 and 5. Now, of course, you can combine both of these statements into a single command if you prefer. So you could say A, where A is greater than 3. That gives you the same value. Now, we're going to use the concept of logical indexing along with our label image to update our mask. So let's switch over to MATLAB. Now as a reminder, this is what our original mask looks like, and we are trying to separate out the individual circles in this mask. Now as I mentioned in the first video, the important part of the label image that we want are the ridge lines, which have a value of 0. So in this case, we are going to select elements with a value of 0 in the label matrix, which is the variable L. And we're going to use that to index pixels in the mass M and turn them into false. And that way we will split the objects apart. So using logical indexing, I'm going to index values of the matrix M. And the index is going to be L equals equals 0, which means to select the elements of L that is equal to 0. And we're going to set these values here to false. And so now if I display the mask again, you'll see that now 
um, we have where those labels were, we have now um, used that to cut the different objects apart. Now, one thing you should note is that if you look at the mass that we've obtained, there's still some small regions in the mass that uh, appear to be incorrectly segmented. Now, these regions occur from the output of the watershed function. So this again here, uh, the image in the background is the labeled image. And this box in red here is just a close-up of this region here. And you can see that there are just these weird small squares in the labeled image for, out of the watershed transform. Now it turns out that the reason for this is because of small intensity minima in the distance transform of the image. Now look, each of these local minima would create a new separate region after the watershedding function is complete. So to correct for this, we will need to remove this minima before we run the watershed function. And we can do this by using the function imhmin. Now this function takes in two input arguments. The first is uh, the distance transform, dd. And the second input argument is the depth, h. And this function would now suppress any minima in the distance transform dd whose depth is less than this value of h. Let's switch over to MATLAB and try this out. So the command I'm going to use here is d2 equals imhmin parentheses dd and I'm going to start with a depth of 2. Now if we rerun the watershed now again pay attention to this region here where you see the small squares. If I now display the updated watershed, you notice that those regions have gone away. And so simply by suppressing the minimum value, uh, sorry, by suppressing the, the basins in the distance transform that have a depth of less than 2, we have now corrected for the over-segmentation problem we were having earlier. Now we can update our mask. But first I'm going to have to regenerate it because we overrode it earlier. So if we now use our new watershed results to update the mask, we should find that now each object has been separated quite well and there are no blocks um, or small objects in this image. All right, so just to summarize the whole watershed algorithm, first you need to segment the objects of interest to get a mask. Second, you need to compute the distance transform and remember to take the negative value of the distance transform and also to take the distance transform of the inverted mask. Third, you will need to suppress shallow local maxima to avoid over-segmenting the image. Four, run the watershed algorithm. And five, update the mask with the ridge lines from the label image generated by the watershed. Now, if you prefer to look at code, these are the five lines of code um, that we have basically carried out in the last couple of videos.